BART is an integral part of building a better Bay Area. It's our biggest, most widespread, and most written mass transit system for hundreds of thousands of Bay Area residents. It's the cheapest, fastest, and most reliable form of mass transportation. So it makes sense that when more people ride BART, less people are on our roads, making its health important to every commuter in the Bay Area. But BART is not at its healthiest. Rider satisfaction is at a record low after reaching record levels just a few years ago. Ridership is dipping and the system is struggling to modernize and expand at the same rate as our swelling population. Now all week long we are digging deeper into the challenges facing BART, looking at what the transit agency is doing right and what customers say they can do better. Tonight I take a look at what the agency could have been based on the original plan decades ago. Sure, plenty of riders have criticized BART over the decades. BART is always a valid excuse for being late. I'd, I could ride it, but I don't because it's because you can't sit down. They're too sporadic. You know, sometimes they ride on time and sometimes they don't. But to really understand its strengths and weaknesses, you have to ride back even further in time to the battles that raged before the first shovels even broke ground. Right here. Former BART board member Quinton Kopp is pointing to the route that could have taken BART straight down the peninsula to San Jose, potentially ringing the bay with a single integrated transit system. He says the path, now used by Caltrain, was originally railroad land with a built-in right-of-way. So why didn't it happen? Cop points to powerful business interests who feared the system would suck their customers north to San Francisco. That would have been the most economical way to proceed. It didn't happen, again, because of the commercial pressure from the major uh, shopping center developer in San Mateo County. With the Silicon Valley boom still decades away, semi-rural Santa Clara County also pulled out of the expensive project. And when engineers objected to tracks over the Golden Gate Bridge, the original dream of a system running from Novato all the way through San Jose, laid out in this 1960s map, was over. You've got the third rail providing the electric power. But transportation writer Ethan Elkind believes some other missed opportunities might still be salvageable. BART was conceived of as a way to bring professionals from the suburbs into downtown San Francisco, downtown Oakland. So they wanted a nice, comfortable ride, big seats, and make it a sort of a commuter train. There were three priorities for almost every station. Parking, parking, and even more parking. And he believes they missed a golden opportunity to build more high-density housing. What needs to happen now is that those land use restrictions that local cities have put on BART need to be relaxed, and we need to see more of that transit-oriented development. Finally, both Cop and Elkind believe there's one last bold move that could rechart BART's future for decades to come. A second tube or bridge crossing the bay. If you had that, you could do 24-hour service. You could serve different parts of Oakland and the East Bay and also the southern part of San Francisco where you have a lot of job growth, huge ridership benefits. And perhaps usher in a new 21st century vision for a transit system born roughly half a century ago. So as you mentioned, BART is currently studying the feasibility of a second crossing. Now all this week, ABC 7 News is following the Bay Area BART experience. See what it is really like to ride now and what track the transit system will take next. Because a safer BART means a better Bay Area for all of us. Now